So this house is, this is Patina Turner, the tiny house. And uh, let's see, it's got poplar walls. It's all pallets. You can see all the, the pallet wood. It's about 90% reclaimed material, including the license plates up here on the ceiling from uh, picking up on the side of the road. But if they're yours, don't, don't arrest me. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just a tiny, funky little house. Um, I built it about three months. Uh, I've been living in it for about a year and a half or two years. Um, it's got a bunch of weird little features. It's all, it's got DC power and I have an inverter. Uh, so there's a DC refrigerator. I got a whole charge controller here and my panels are outside on an umbilical cord. Um, I made, got this card out of the trash behind a Walmart. So yeah. I, I built a kitchen out of it. So it's got a bunch of drawers and you got you know, canned goods. And I built these trays out of old drainage bits for okay. for like, you know, old carts and stuff. Um, all the tables are all hinged with some heavy duty, heavy weight hinges. So I can just do that. That's exactly what I'm going to do. And this one's also hinged too, so you can... Yep. I have that exact same idea. Same I haven't kind of done idea. Yet. And I like... These hinges are sort of weak, so they're good for smaller stuff, but these heavier duty ones are worth their weight. And then all my clothes are in this chest here. And then if I go like this, I put a forward hinge and my sleeping bags and stuff are underneath there on the back side of it. So that's where all the bedding stays. Um, and then I got, you know, spare chairs and fold out chairs and stuff that are in here that can't, they're probably 70 years old, but they work really well because they just tuck away. So anytime you can find weird, cool chairs, like that fit in tiny houses, that's like perfect. Um, and there's a loft for storage. so. All my clothes are pretty much in here, but up there, there's a, a loft that's got some Mexican uh, crates that I picked up from the Mexican grocery store, and they work pretty well just to keep my camping gear and winter clothes or summer clothes. Or I love your can lights. Yeah, these uh, these were in the shop full of nails, and I figured, you know, I'll just, I'll take an old light bulb. That one's got my motorcycle taillight in it from an old bike. <laughs> <laughs> um, these windows, you know, I built, I didn't know how to make a window, so I just took this window and built the casing and eventually made it. So the, these are old, these are probably from the turn of the century. Uh -huh. um, and all these are actually book matched, so these are the exact same piece of pallet wood. I found two pieces that match from the same cut. These are both the same piece of wood that are, they're book matched. Uh, and so yeah, it's a, it's cool. Work of, work of, work in progress. Um, it's got a cubic mini tiny wood stove here, so um, you can see it's got the morning's ashes still in there, but um, it, it burns really tiny little wood. If it's longer than my hand, pretty much that's about the length I need for my wood stove. And uh, just, you know, carry a bunch of kindling here to get it going. There's a local place that gets rid of their old marble for free if you want to pick it up and stuff, and so I got some free... This is a fake one, but these other blocks are from their quarry pile. So you can pick those up, and so they're good, nice thermal mass that I can remove. Um, had one chimney fire, but I figured out why, so I fixed that. So <laughs> haven't had a chimney fire since. Um, yeah. Nice little hang. Yeah, I got hanging up. You know my random equipment. This is just another piece of pallet that I just thought was so beautiful. It's cherry. Yeah. And it was just had this oh. gorgeous grain, so I made it into my little coat rack. Yeah. Um, what yeah. about the uh, um, well, the wood? You showed me the shower, and then I, I kind of want to see your rain, rain catch. Yeah, that, we go so check that out. Sure. Yeah. yeah, we head up this way. The porch might kill you. Go we'll walk down the porch. It's awesome. I love the stumps there. Yeah, red oak <laughs> and a poplar stump. Yeah. Um, and so in the winter, you know, I just put some rusty tin up down there. These, so the outside actually is all pallets. These were all pieces of pallets. This is. I'm going to be a Chet pallet from that company and then I, you know, treated them with different waterproofing treatments and stuff, but these are just pieces of tin I pulled out of my neighbor's yard that work great to keep the rain off the windows directly when it's raining so I don't have to clean them as often. And if I need to put anything inside, I can just reach in from out here and put it in there. <laughs> so I have a catchment on the front, which I usually put into a bucket, and then I have a catchment on the back. It's got a metal roof and it drains into this 50 gallon. 55 gallon um, food grade mm -hmm. water container and then from here it siphons off into this 35 gallon which this is usually the one that freezes solid on me so it's sort of inconvenient this time of year sometimes but it doesn't get that cold and then I purify it twice um, and I actually have a couple screens there's a 
screen up there, a screen here, and a screen inside of here. Mm -hmm. So by the time it gets into there, it's usually pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, and I clean it probably once a month or more. I totally take it totally down, empty it all out, flush it into this one, put the rest in the garden, and then clean it all the way out and scrub it down and bleach it, and then let it dry and then put it back. Because otherwise, here with the heat, certain times of year it'll just be full of mosquito mm -hmm. larvae and stuff. And mm -hmm. Some people put a little dab of bleach in it, or some people put oil on top, a little bit of vegetable oil to sit on the surface, and then they can't lay their eggs or something. So oh, that's another method. Okay. But for me, it's just it's better to do it because I'm under trees and leaves, and so they wind up just making it a big mess. So otherwise, this gets full of algae and that sort of junk. But yep. Uh -huh. But yeah, it's been sort of fun. I don't own a car, so it's sort of hard to move this around. You <laughs> don't have a car? No, I haven't had a car in like years. <laughs> yeah. So I have a there's a tractor I can use to move it around. That kind of thing, but um, I got my scooter. So you got your wood here, your stack of wood? Yeah, I just, uh, you know, any of the, I split for my neighbors, and so any of their stuff that's so small they can't use it, or limbs that fall down, I just take it and cut it up with it on the electric saw using, um, on in the shop actually, using like a buzz saw. And so I just run <laughs> with that rather than using a chainsaw, because it's a lot safer to put it in a vise and then just, just do a bunch of cuts with the saw. So some of it I'll cut with a chainsaw for the big wood, but most of these little long sticks, it's sort of unsafe on the ground and so by putting it in the vise I can just do a whole bunch of wood in the shop on a rainy day and put it in the wheelbarrow and stack it. So, so I built this out of an old grill cart and then this is an old window and some stuff and so I yeah. just my dehydrator but these are just black jugs and in the summertime I put them in the sink and in the sun and so they get nice and hot over 100 degrees in the summer and then this time wow. of year um, I just heat them up but essentially you you know, <laughs> so I get a shower good. and That's I use great. maybe one of these a night and then it's all I need. And I do it on my porch and the porch sprouts mushroom logs. <laughs> and it's like mushrooms come out of my porch when I keep it wet. So it's sort of a win-win. But it works. I'm, I'll probably build a shower, but you know, this has been working fine for years. So. How much, how many watts of solar do you have? Um, let's see, I'm probably about 400 watts or so, maybe 450. Those are some older panels, but they do pretty well. Um, this this time of year probably has. If you want to go check out the solar panels, we can. Yeah, we could do that. How much is your? How much do you burn, burn through your wood? A night, or yeah. A, like yeah, I would With say. With your wood thing. I would say a night. I might burn maybe one or two of these a night. Like maybe. Huh. <laughs> Does it heat up pretty good in there? Oh, it'll be 80 degrees in there. With oh the yeah. Wood and, yeah. Good to know. It's uh, double insulated. It's got foam insulation in all the walls and then reflectix but I also put um, like there's battens and then the roof it's got double it's got foam insulation on top and then the bottom's got foam and it's all sealed and taped so it's yeah. really well insulated it's like a giant cooler pretty much yeah and so I got my umbilical cord right here going down from yeah. the house up to my panels and I built these out of old uh this is an old screen door from yeah. like a, a house there's actually the handles right here from the old the the old door mechanism. Uh -huh. yep. So I built the tracks and just put these up there. So they're adjustable. So this is their winter setting. They're sort of up here, and then in the summertime they get positioned a little bit farther, you know, back some more. Um, yeah. This gives you enough power for what you need. Yeah, I'm, I'm almost always 100% in the summertime by 11. Um, okay. And then this time of year, you know, I might go a couple days where it's cloudy and not get 100%, but still have enough for cooking. I have a little rice cooker I use to boil eggs or, or make rice or do porridge or all kinds of you know, soup and stuff. I cook a lot yeah. of stuff in a rice cooker. I noticed your sun oven. Yeah, and I got my, this is an old school sun oven that I handed down to me by Martha, but it works great. So <laughs> on a sunny day, this thing's cooking and you know, yeah. roasting, roasting up a roast or making some lentils or doing some bread or making some granola. So. This is an older design. They've upgraded them a bunch since then. Yeah, uh -huh. it works great. I've cooked hundreds and hundreds of meals in this little thing. So wow, that is amazing. If it was sunny out today, I would have had something in it, but it was really warm and cloudy, so, yeah. so it sort of stays relatively dry under my solar panel. What kind of battery banks do you use for your? Solar I have one 100 amp hour battery I got from a used battery recycler dude. So it's like a little battery this big, and with the DC refrigerator, it's an ultra efficient fridge. So yeah. Um, it works great. So actually, we did a job, a solar installation job with one of my neighbors who's a solar tech. And uh, in that job, he had some extra batteries that came out of it the guy wanted to replace. And so yeah. instead of recycling them, they all, they weren't amazing, but they all had a nominal charge rate. Yeah. You know, they were okay, so we topped them off. So I might put those in the house and upgrade. <laughs> you know, so we'll see. But I see your little garden here. Do you... Yeah, uh, it's my Corona garden. 
<laughs> this was just a patch of grass in February, and so I started digging and okay. double dug the whole thing. And so yeah, I've grown, I grew tomatoes all year in here, and I have kale and. So you do, you could do all year round planting. Oh yeah, or? yeah. In fact, those are all my salad greens over there. You can see some cabbage. Yeah, I do um, see that. Yep. Under those covers, there's all sorts of salad and stuff still growing. There's um, turnip greens in here. Uh, there's some kale growing in there. I got some spinach. Um, so I usually get these winter ones started in fall. Yeah. And then they get started, they can hardy get hardy enough to last through the winter just small and then after a Persephone days when we get more than about 10 hours of light or so, they'll start we just going crazy because they've been sitting there. As yeah. long as something doesn't get in and eat them before then. So. Oh, yeah. But yeah, it's cool being able to feed yourself and there's neighbors yeah. with, with oh local my gosh. food, you know, people that raise chickens and we trade, you know, I got tons of cucumbers, what do you got? Oh, I got peppers <laughs> up my ears. Here, here. Yeah. I would go back to trade and barter, why not? We, we do a lot of that, yeah. And there's, you know, a sustainable farmer right at the end of this road here that grows a little sustainable farm for the local people. So he's got a food stand at the old house up front. He puts fruit out and food. Yeah. And, um, there's a lot of old fruit trees. We have an orchard over there that's been established for probably 25 years, so there's a lot of fruit trees there. You said you had a rump roast. Is there someone that has, like, cattle around? Or? Well, actually, right here on the other side of the fence, there's oftentimes a whole herd of about 25 or 30 cow right there, just... <laughs> so I get communicating with them. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so the, you could buy cattle or meat from him. One of our guys that lives here actually does uh, local chicken and pork and stuff, and so he'll, he'll pick up from a local farm that butchers it and then sells it like a CSA around. So we get, you know, local meats and stuff, too, that can come through. Um, really good chicken. Mm -hmm. Better than better than just going to the local poultry plant. So. Yeah. Oh, I won't even eat eggs from the store anymore. <laughs> Can't do it. They just don't taste good anymore. Not the same. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, this is sort of my home. All these oak trees were planted, you know, um, maybe about 25 or 30 years ago by Jamie. In fact, the little tool he used to plant them all is over there by the shop. So it's sort of cool having a white oak forest because in the summertime this is hot and so this shade here from all these trees is like a nice little dense shade area so all yeah. the birds come through and nice. it's pretty peaceful. About 15-20 about degrees cooler in there than it is out here in the summertime. So I did all kinds of weird stuff. I've worked on old ships in like Washington, like woodworking. I think I remember that in your blog. Um, I've done... You're like an engineer though? Is I'm a cartographer, a map maker oh, by map trade, yeah, okay. GIS. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, all kinds of fun stuff, you know, felling trees and doing tree trimming work and mopping. I've just done weird stuff on the road, you know, working with friends with cattle and stuff. And so this is a like an old back to the land intentional community from the 70s. They started coming out here in 71, I think. And it was just a bunch of, you know, folks that lived in Birmingham that wanted a place to come camping on the weekends and just, you know, live. A, it was all just an open field. There was no trees here at all. Camel, they, Bermingport, I think, is probably the last place. There's an old coal mine up there that used to be water. It's easy boat ramps, like right there on the river. And so there's space like 10 to 15 miles apart along the black. You need a good battery for that, eh? Doesn't take a lot of juice, but yeah, and it hasn't. I have a volt meter, but. cherry seasoned up and just using a little bit of twigs or some sticks and the smaller the sticks the better they burn so it's even better because the smaller the little twig you find that the faster the more surface area it has the faster it burns and just washing washing washing
Down by uh, on the locust course, not too far off the locust course there. After we met with Mike in Alabama, we reached a pinnacle. Our thoughts were transitioning to what we want to do when we get home. We had the experiences, we had the footage, and we bonded and met new people. We knew there was some time left on the trip. We just enjoyed it as we went back. This is Coleman, Mississippi. As we made our way back, we wanted to make some distance this time. But as we stopped for gas, we were stopped by four different people who were curious about us. We had to give our story four different times. We got to the point where we just needed to start going so we can make up our time on the road. They talked about their town during the Civil War and the fact that they made their own state for a while. Because they seceded during the Civil War, they didn't want any part of either side and they were hated and killed by both sides. I discovered this was also a subject that was completely different from what the media tells us, and I thought this was significant. After this trip, I can honestly say that I'm a different man than I was when I first started out. I got to know myself a little better. I got to know God a little better. I'm grateful for God who preserved us through this, and for Brenton who is willing to continually pray and talk to God about it.
So the trip meter just flipped. I did not reset that. So that is 1,000 miles exactly. Pretty cool. Do you guys know what you guys want to be thinking about getting? No? I don't know yet. This is all new food to me, so. Well, I'm Filipino, so that's where we get the the rolls. They're Filipino lumpia rolls. Okay. So they're just stuffed with chicken, shrimp, crab, corned beef. Where's, uh, does your ad have like a website or something? Yep, all my stuff's on here. We own food trucks and uh, we're just waiting for the pandemic to subside so we can go back to doing events again. So we're just staying here in this little area and servicing all the little workers and community. Yeah. Mm. Here's the shrimp roll. And here's the salad. I'm probably going to have the shrimp roll. It was feeling of anticipation to get back to our life and projects back home, but also time to reflect on what we experienced. As I thought back on this adventure, oddly enough, I felt a satisfaction of assurance about the world. There are more good people out there than we realize. Real conversation and face-to-face -face interactions are not at all what we find online. Complete strangers wanted to meet us, share with us what they learned, and give us food. There's a natural euphoria in this environment. There's really no need for prescription drugs when you're living like this. Being surrounded by God's creation and his life was enough, and the best thing is, it's eternal. I felt like our short experience of under a week and a half was packed with impressions and epiphanies one after another. It seemed that the trip was equal to at least two months of real life experiences. So at the beginning of the trip, Brent and I had conversations of the world events and our opinions and the problems of the world. And on our way home, our conversation was just full of scripture and talking about God and what he's doing with the world and, and how it fits in with all these events going on. We felt the power of Jesus Christ in his words when he spoke to his disciples and as he prayed. I've always had a question in my head of how we can continue to increase freedom for everybody while getting along and solving problems. For a long time, I always thought it was complex, but I realize it is beautifully simple. The fundamental feelings of loving freedom, living among God's creations, and loving that others are enjoying it too, easily overpowers the differences of opinions and politics, science or religious beliefs. Just good people who genuinely care about others. They are brilliant and fast at solving problems or resolving concerns just really naturally. It is not a long drawn out process because it is simple and local. We tend to have a hope in one really smart man or woman to lead and solve problems. That idea just seemed ridiculous in this setting. This simple life knows what to do naturally. I saw no indication of depression or mental health issues, just the opposite. Oh, we made it. So the odometer flipped plus 149 miles. So 1,149 miles total for the trip. This is pretty much uh, what you find in a lot of places. Uh, very soggy and wet. I don't know what you call it. Marshy, marsh. 
I know they probably have a term for it, but I don't know. But this is uh, where all the crocs, uh, not crocs, but uh, alligators and stuff live. So I've been getting some advice from the locals and know what to look out for. And he said, they pretty much leave you alone unless you're messing with their little babies and the babies kind of have a little screech or a little whine or something when they're in distress. And then that's when you watch out because that mother's going to come along pretty much in nature in all kind of species. But um, I just wanted to show this clip because it's looks uh, pretty typical of what we drive by a lot. It was really snowing really good last night. I haven't stepped outside my tiny house yet, but <clears throat> there's a satisfying feeling knowing that I was in there while the wind was blowing and I was nice and toasty warm and something that I built myself. Getting the shelter that you need and the warmth that you need. It's really great, great, great blessing. Well, we finished our trip, finished our scooter adventure Got home last night in a nice uh, storm. This is strapped to the front of this Brenton's truck. And um, here's the leftovers from that snow storm last night. We had a fun time getting through that on the way home. And that's a story in and of itself. And when you roll in after a couple weeks of that kind of adventure, you just really appreciate what you have when you get home and you feel even more blessed and that's that's the feeling i got 